Hey YouTube, today I'm going to talk to you about what a DJ does. Now, when you hear the term DJ, what do you think of? I've asked a few people and what they told me is, you know, turntables, scratching, music are the three main things I've heard. Um, and that's true, a DJ does scratch and play, you know, but that's not what all DJs do. What a DJ really is hired to do is create an atmosphere. And with this atmosphere, pretty much the DJ is trying to get as many people on the dance floor having a good time. And a lot of time that's a lot of times that's hard for a DJ to do when at the beginning of an event you can't really expect to have many people up there dancing. And the reason why is people are, you know, still tensed up, they're not, you know, they got off work, you know, they're not really in the mood. But um during, later on in the night, uh the DJ, you know, or the um, clients or the, you know, people attending the event, you know, they, you know, drink a few beers and then they get more, you know, uh loose, I guess you can call it, and then they decide, you know, it's easier for them to get out on the dance floor. Um, and this is why if, you know, you're new DJing, new at DJing, <coughs> and you, you know, you start DJing an event, you know, the first hour and a half, two hours, when you're playing the music that they like, you know, not many people are dancing. In the last hour, an hour and a half, two hours, people start dancing a lot, and the reason is because, you know, they're, they've had a few beers, they're loosened up later in the night. So, and I've had this, you know, happen with the country wedding I did. Um, a lot of people, you know, I had I had a reasonable amount of people, you know, dancing, you know, when they got there. But um, it was really last hour and a half that people really started dancing. Um, you know, they all had a great time. And, you know, really you want to play good, mu play good music, uh, appropriate music at the right time. Um, that's pretty much what a DJ is hired to do. And obviously, you can't create an atmosphere during dinner time if you're playing heavy metal. Uh, you know, really, what I suggest—I've said this before in different videos—is play some um, jazz music. Um, I've got this huge 10 CD box set of Miles Davis. It's got a few hundred songs of his, and I just pop it in a CD player, and I get it where it goes back and forth from CD to CD. And I just I leave that on during dinner at a comfortable volume, not too loud. And really, another thing a DJ needs to know if you're new um, is you know know the right amount of volume to uh, play music. You don't want to play it too loud, and you don't want to play it too soft. You gotta know the you know good level. Um, and you know the reason why is because if you're blasting jump around like as loud as your system can go, some people aren't gonna like that. Um, because if you got like an 800 watt system for a party of 100 people and you're blasting it as loud as it, you know, it's going to hurt their ears, um, you know. But it, it really depends on the situation. You play music louder at high school events or events with kids, and still you can play music really loud with, um, you know, at weddings. And I I like weddings. They're easier because the music range is wider. On high school events, they're tougher because it's just you have to selectively choose your music. Um, <clears throat> beat mixing is one of the, you know, uh, important thing for a DJ to do because really people dance to the beat. They don't, you know, I mean, if you pay attention, they're not going off beat when they're dancing. They're going to it, you know. So you want to keep the song on beat and that's going to keep people on the dance floor for any event, pretty much. Now it's harder to beat mix when you're playing background music, but really what you want to do is when you're beat mixing, and like I said, there's a video I made about MixMeister and it can beat mix. Um, and a beat mix really does create an atmosphere. Um, another thing that creates an atmosphere is lighting. If you want to have the correct lighting on at the right time, you don't want to have a huge light tree with you know ten different lights, have them all on at once. Um, it'll bright it up too much, make it too bright. And if you have halogen lights, they do make the room really hot quick. If you have LED lights, they don't heat up at all. And I prefer having those. I don't have any because I don't have any money. I haven't really been doing any uh, DJ work lately, so it's not really worth it to spend a lot of money on something you're not bringing any money on. So pretty much, um, if you can get into LED lights, they do look cool, like the Revo 3. Um, that's a cool effect. It doesn't heat it up. Um, but you know, I, I, you know, lights I use, they do heat it up pretty quick and you have to wait when the event's over. If you have it on all night, you have to wait for a little bit for it to cool down. Um, but yeah, pretty much. 
And, you know, with the slow songs, you don't want to have those fast-moving lights going on. It doesn't create the atmosphere, you know. And I'd suggest, I, I have a disco ball. I bring it along with me. Um, I, it's pretty rare I ever set it up unless I know I'm going to use it. But otherwise, you know, during the slow songs, I keep the color bar on. I change it to a slower, sl slower pace, put it to the beat. And that's pretty much what I do. So if you have any questions, comments, or anything, feel free to, you know, go ahead and ask. Um... Before I go, I'm going to give you one tip, and that tip is to bring backup equipment with you. And the reason why is, say, your mixer fails on you. You need another mixer or a speaker blows. You're going to want another speaker because then, you know, it's harder. Another thing, I would highly suggest bringing CDs with you, recordable, blank recordable CDs. Because um, now this is a situation that actually happened to me is I was at, the, uh, I was at a wedding, and then I forgot to bring the sound card to my computer. And the little headphone jack on the computer is broken. So I couldn't hook my computer up to my system, which I use the computer a lot. And that's how I take songs, like requests. Like if most places I go, they'll have Wi-Fi, so I use LimeWire. And yeah, that's cheap, I know. But it, you know, if you don't have a song someone wants, you know, and you know it's a good song, you know, you'll want to get it. And, you know, a lot of people do believe that Song, songs that come off the internet that you download don't have the full quality, and I believe that too, but for one song, it's not going to be much of a difference, and then you know to get that album, that song. So, um, <clears throat> But I really do suggest bringing recordable CDs. They, it saved my life. I didn't have a song. I had, you know, the uh, Wedding March, I didn't have that one on, the, on CD, which I was surprised, so I had to get it on, and, you know, I brought these along, and it saved me. So, and I, I bring pretty much all the CDs I have, because I do use the CDs a lot, but what I do suggest is make mix CDs, um, because say you have like, what, 2,000, 3,000 CDs, it's going to be tough to find the CD you're looking for. So make a mix of all the good, or all the good dance songs you've got, like that'll, you know, you'll play during the wedding, like jump around, YMCA, you want to put them all in like one of these recordable CDs, write it down so it's easy to find. Because you know, I've, I've you know I've always done that, but you know, with c carrying around four or five hundred CDs, it gets tough to find the CD you're looking for. I'm gonna leave it at that before I run out of time. Thanks for watching. Comment, rate.